Welcome. Welcome. To Vince Real Talk. Real Talk. Like I like to call it Ert. You hate it, but I love it. Hate it. It's fun. I'm Sarah. Uh, okay, so I work in the event industry, have been since 2009. I don't really want to date myself, but there you go. Yeah. Mostly worked on the facility end, but I've done catering and also um, the front of house event planning, if you want to call it that. I'm TJ. I won't say my last name. Um, Tracy Jr. Yes. Um, I've been in the events industry... I don't know. I guess it depends. Like, bar managing is that events? Kind of. 2006. Did we put it on your resume so you could get your job? Maybe. Then it'll count it. <laughs> um, I'm a events manager, but I don't know. 2020 really threw a loop in that, so I don't really know what I do now. Events Real Talk is a podcast where we say what most of you in the industry are thinking. Um, we're not thinking or didn't not. know you should have been thinking that. Yes. Yeah. So each week we share our unsolicited opinions, event experience, and the highs and lows of the event industry. Mostly lows at this point. Mostly lows. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Two events, real talk. Ert. I am. Oh, I just hit my microphone. I am TJ. It's just that's really loud all of a sudden. You like yelled at me. I'm Sarah. Sunshine okay. day. Sunshine day. Don't quit your day job. Yeah, I know. I won't. It's cool. It's cool. All right. So we're going to jump right into this today because I think Sarah might be experiencing some feelings. <laughs> what kind of feelings are we talking about? Here? Uh, I, don't know, I, I have I don't not. Know. I have not. No, that would be a lie. <laughs> How much drink. coffee did you have today? I had one cup and I had one drink this morning and then... Define drink. Drink of what? <laughs> ranch water lime, 5% alcohol to... Is that what ranch water is? Is it alcohol? Is it a seltzer? No, it's not a seltzer. Well, I guess kind of. So technically, if you're going to go with the redneck country way of a, a ranch water, they say it's a... Um, Oh crap. What's the what's the dang? Oh, Topo Chico with tequila and lime. That's what people call oh, ranch water. Okay. But they actually have a ranch That's water terrible. drink that comes in a can that does not Yeah, taste. I've seen it at Kroger. Yeah. It's really good. I bought the lime kind. Jamie bought grapefruit. She'd give me a head nod if she likes it. Or she hasn't tried it, I'm sure. Yeah, that's about right. Because I see them at the grocery store all the time and I'm like, is it canned water? Because okay, let me tell you. Hurricanes in Houston, you get canned water delivered to you. So I really like canned water, like not sparkling, not like anything special, literally tap water in an aluminum can. So it doesn't really have (laughs) the carbonation that like the sparkling, but it's alcohol. It's out. It's not just canned water. No, it's definitely 5% alcohol. Okay. And it's gluten-free and it's only got two sugars in it. So it only has two carbs. Oh, so it's nasty. (laughs) Actually, it doesn't taste bad at all. <sighs> I guess bad. I know what I'll be doing this weekend. Um, okay. Yeah, I said the rest so, of the tanner. What? <laughs> so let's jump in. All right. Um, I don't know, like three weeks ago, I guess, because this is a late recording. <laughs> Sarah. <clears throat> um, Not my I... fault. Daycare didn't tell me they had a bug. Bastards. Took, took the fam uh, to the color factory in Houston, not the one in New York. Because can't afford that. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised, one, on the installation itself um, or on the museum itself. It's an interactive color art museum. But super impressed by their COVID policies and like their ability to implement them and just really how everything was handled. I was super excited. Super stoked. So if you haven't listened to any of our previous podcasts, TJ told me about this place last fall. Like we did an episode on it. It was last year. Brief. 
2020 might have been, been 2019 i don't know <laughs> it's definitely 2020 yeah so we talked a lot about their covid policies then has anything changed do they still operate under the same thing i mean you know minus the whole governor's thing you went prior to that so i did um okay so real quick we're gonna run through what they did prior to the governor doing what he did Hey, keep me awake. I'm, I'm slowly <laughs> fading. Okay. So first of all, they had actual working hand sanitizing stations in every room, which has been a big pet peeve of mine, because if I go to use the hand sanitizer and it don't work or there's none in it, why is it there? The show. For show. Um, so when you walk in, a guy meets you at the door. Like he won't even, you can't even get in the building. Yeah, right. Guy opens the door. He's like, oh, let me run through uh, what we are and are not doing today. <laughs> and he basically goes through the COVID guidelines and he tells you, listen, you leave the mask on the whole time, right? Perfect. Anybody above Just the age, ninja. anybody like above the age of two, keep your mask on. You get one warning. Uh, if you. Uh, I do have a side question. Are there really a lot of two-year-olds that can keep a mask on because my three-year-old refuses? Well, I mean, I'm going to say I probably wouldn't take a two-year-old to this, right? Three-year-old, maybe, depending. But they um, even say the same thing when you go to the doctor. Will he wear a mask? No, he's three. They don't like things on their face unless it's going in their mouth. Okay, anyway, sorry, moving on. Sidebar. So you get one warning. That's my one warning. You get one warning. <laughs> Um, if they have to come and tell you a second time to put a mask or keep a mask on, you will be escorted out of the building by security. Now he tells you the children usually do not have an issue with this. <laughs> it's always the adults. <laughs> so he gives you, you know, fair warning. Uh, you walk in, another lady greets you, gives you a rundown of everything that's going on, goes through the COVID policies again, and then lets you in line. So they only let 13 people in the area at a time. Like they count. If you're at 14 people, sorry, like next, next group. Um, um, sorry, I got to read through my notes because it's been so long. They have a staff member like in every area. Days. It's <laughs> not a, anyone else's fault. You can't read your shitty handwriting. They... I don't have my glasses on. Okay. Like well, then put them on, put them on. Well, they keep fogging up. Um, they have a staff member in every space. So you go through the first door, this lady runs through, she says, okay, we're gonna get this little token. The tokens for the photo booth areas. They have cameras set up. You got to register your token. Okay, cool. Register my token. That would have been nice to have been done beforehand. You know, like had a coin pre-registered. So you walk in and you're like, oh, I'm this person. Here's your, here's your token. Um, token of appreciation. It's a token that's registered to your email address and you scan it at the little cameras and it takes your picture and automatically emails it to you at the end of your trip when you return the token. I for free? Like, for free. Yeah, free. That is awesome. For free. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Almost every area had a individually wrapped treat for you to take, which was nice. Did you say, did you say treat? Uh, treat. Oh, it sounded, like, it sounded like you said crate. I was a little confused treat. there. I, where are you going to go with the crate? Um, treat. Okay. So that was nice. That made me feel better about paying so much for a ticket. <laughs> but anyways, back to their COVID stuff. Um, they have a person in every space that basically walks you through what it's supposed to be for and how you're supposed to interact with it. And so you also have somebody there in case there's a mask issue or in case there's a security issue, somebody is there. As soon as you walk in, they say, hey, everybody grab some hand sanitizer, right? Like they make you do it, get some hand sanitizer. I mean, they even stop you and they're like, hey, you wanna grab some, it's free. You know, cracking jokes. It was really, it was a chill environment. Um, they had air purifiers in every room. 
the little mini ones with, I have pictures. We can link some pictures. <laughs> so That's if they have one. individual room air purifiers, do they do anything with the air conditioning system? Do they change the filtration system at all? Or are they just doing so, individual air purifiers? Or did you not ask? So it was in addition to okay. what they were already doing because like one of the spaces had to do with scents, smelling things. Um, and so they upped each of the little I guess, scent satchels that they used for that. And so then they had to pump more air <laughs> into that space. And so that was also purified air that they were pumping. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, well, because all I can think of is when you're pumping air into something is everybody's heads inflating, you know, I don't have a lot of, I don't know. It's just, they're pumping air. All these words that big words you're trying to use that you're stumbling through. That's another one. I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to keep me awake right now. Well, you sent me to do a very exhausting task this morning. Uh, that's your own problem. The networking makes you exhausted. So We've already fun. had this call. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so. Um, one of the areas had a ball pit, which you might Ooh. think like, well, how do you sanitize that? Because that's the whole lot of nastiness. It is. Um, Only but the kids pees in it, like the pool. So they're like, stop. <laughs> so in that room over the ball pit was, they were spraying sanit sanitization. So they were spraying chemicals over this ball pit <laughs> to sanitize the space as people were in it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so that was really awesome too, because at first I was like, oh, let's skip this. And then I saw this like giant sprayer machine that had a hoses over the ball pit and it was spraying it. So... <laughs> I can't. I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm not on your level. I have had like zero sleep. I need a Dr. But, Pepper. But all I keep thinking is sanitizing balls. Okay, go. Yeah, it's like on the golf course, the little ball washer. It's up and down. <laughs> You're turning a little red there. Sarah. I know. <laughs> oh, the worst time to do video for the first time. Shit. <laughs> this is literally the best. <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I am. I didn't mean to. I can't get my tissue. <laughs> What do you mean you hit record and hope for the best? Did that just not come through? Yes. So please she, tell me that that was like- Doesn't want to watch this, this shit show that's going on. She's like, mm, I have better things to do, ma'am. <laughs> oh, she's going to leave. Okay. That was funny. I'm sorry. You said balls. I see balls spraying in my mind. You know, balls are nasty. They don't get cleaned very well. Oh. Yeah, like basketballs. Yeah, and then the worst you to throw the golf course thing in there because it is that stupid thing goes up and down like this. Yep, it does. <laughs> and he tells me it's not the dirtiest sport. I swear it is. So, <laughs> all right, moving just on. Just to recap, I lost my shit. <laughs> okay, pillar factory, go. So pre governor BS, they had really excellent. COVID policies in place. So I reached out because I was so impressed. And I was like, hey, so what are y'all going to do now? <laughs> and after I asked, like uh, the day after, they actually posted on Instagram their policies and everything. They're not changing. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. They're think going so. to keep everything. Um, so let's see what they say. We've decided to continue requiring, oh, it was everyone six years and older to wear masks while inside the venue. We're also continuing all of our COVID protocols included time ticketing and limiting the number of guests inside. 
We'll keep monitoring the COVID rates in Houston over the next few weeks and months and are planning to update our safety procedures as needed. Um, I also asked how all of this affected their business. Um, so they were able to answer, Miss Allison, um, that in 2019, they were selling out most of their time slots. And then in 2020, they had close to five plus months um, of actually being able to be open. Mm -hmm. um, they've slowly been rebuilding, but are still only allowing 50% capacity in each given time slot. So I feel like, I mean, when I went, it was 13, right? So yeah. like 26 is their hundred percent capacity for each time slot. 13 was like the perfect number because you had a lot of people like waiting to use the cameras and like, you know, some of the spaces weren't very big. So that was, you know, I felt like 13 was like the perfect amount of people. So like if they moved in the future and went back to hundred percent capacity, 13 might still be ideal for them. Yeah. I mean, granted it's not money revenue, all that fun stuff, but it gives you a better, well, I would assume from a consumer's standpoint, you get a better experience because you can actually experience things at its fullest without having to wait for other people. And then, you know, yeah, time to go mm -hmm. or rushing. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. yourself rushing through and being like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Yeah. I'm going to need Legoland to get on that. Cause when I went to Legoland prior to all this stuff, I mean, we could hardly do anything because there were so many damn people. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so all in all your, um, color factory experience was a good one. Um, 11 out of 10, I recommend everybody go like, just go as you know, you might get an hour, hour and a half there if you really take your time doing everything um but yeah it was it was great I think Houston should have more like that more museums like that and in fact there's one other one that I want to go visit what is that Se seismic oh uh, is that one like the earthquake one is that part of the natural science museum no oh. um I don't have the address for that one but it looks like it was just like a giant warehouse and then they installed a bunch of like art music related things and it's super interactive. Um, it kind of looks like you could probably host a rave inside the building and it would work out really well. So you'd be um, very familiar with that space? Lots of black lights and neons. Very familiar. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. So, you know, if somebody wants to buy me a ticket, I will totally go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the art experience of tomorrow. See, Jamie knows what's up. Okay, good. You just didn't say light bulb. No. Like I do. Okay. Oh. That well, was good my deal. that was my my Houston trip. Like okay. I said, Eleven out of ten. Highly recommend. Great for Instagram photos, you know, if that's your thing. Mm -hmm. Um, the TikToking. <laughs> says the person who just got on Instagram to push Dude. her personal business. Addicted to the reels. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> You're a mess. It's like a mini TikTok. Yeah, it kind of, yeah, kind of is. Yeah. I'm, sh I'm sure they're all making money off of each other or That's cahoots fine. together to be billionaires, but. If okay. they could loop me in on that, that'd be great. <laughs> All right, so Color Factory was a positive experience. So let's talk the 2021 Golden Globes. Oh, where are my notes for that? Okay, yeah, I can't <laughs> find mine. So we're going to wing it. But I would like to um, share the video of the. Oh, we're going to link it? The intro, the introduction, the mm -hmm. monologue that. Um, holy crap. Oh, yeah. Tina Fey and Amy Fuller had. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm telling you, it's been a long day. I'm halfway there. All right. So it took place on February 28th and it was a virtual event. And they oh, had, huh? A hot mess. Uh, honestly, I didn't really think it was that bad. Their introductory thing was pretty cool. And I did like how they split the screen. So basically, each one was at a different location. So, yes. Um, Tina Fey was on the East Coast and Fuller was on the West Coast. Tina Fey was live from New York in the Rainbow Room and Fuller was live from Beverly Hills. Um, it doesn't 
in Beverly Hills, uh, or Beverly Hilton, excuse me, in Beverly Hills. Um, so one thing I did like watching the video, yeah, I can't read, apparently. Um, Put your glasses on. I don't need glasses. They don't fog like yours because I don't wear them enough. Um, but anyway, so they did the split screen, but it almost kind of looked seamless. And of course, in the beginning, they made a joke about it where Tina Fey's arm went to the other side and somebody's arm from where Amy Fuller was was actually scratching on her. So that was pretty <laughs> funny. Um, and so I didn't get to really watch because I don't really watch that shit anyway, but I didn't really get to watch how they did the awards. I saw a couple people, you know, a lot of these celebrities did the whole, well, let's dress up and have a house party and get in gown and whatnot because they're going to be on their Zoom video. And then you got people like, and I always fuck up his last name, Jason Sudoku, Sudoku, however you say his name. He used to be with Olivia Sodalac. Wilde. Sodalac. It's so not Sodalac. <laughs> anyway, he was sitting on his couch in a hoodie. I yeah. love it. Um, so that, that was really neat just to see like, you know, some that take it super seriously and some that kind of like, just don't give a shit I'm stuck at home. Like it's a virtual experience and everybody's having all these virtual meetings. But, um, one thing that was really cool is the people that were actually on site with the hosts were emergency responders or, mm -hmm. you know, anyone that works that wanted to come, they basically paid for them to come in. They come in, they dress the part like all the celebrities typically do, and they have a meal and they get to hear some good comedy and watch an award show. So they actually, I don't even know how they signed up for it. I know they explained it, but I think honestly, my favorite part out of all of it is they literally made fun of all of the celebrities. Um, and I didn't really see anything that was not 100% seamless. I don't know, did you watch the whole thing? Uh, I did not watch the whole thing. I just watched all the negatives. Ooh, well, let's hear them. Um, so there was a lot of bad audio. Obviously, like these people are doing stuff from home. Some celebrities had oh, yeah. people come and set up the equipment and do everything. Others, mm -hmm. I mean, it was from a laptop, you right. know. Um, so there were audio issues um, from it being muffled to video being shaky um, let's see. Vanity Fair wrote, it was awfully janky, <laughs> full of <laughs> lags, scratchy audio and speeches and jokes swallowed up by the muffle of digital fuzz. It was far more stressful than it was fun. Um, I think that, um, definitely defines all of 2021's event industry. <laughs> yes. So, you know, it kind of falls back to when you're so hard on people and you're like, there's no room for mistakes. Like this is audio. You should have tested it beforehand. Well, I mean, no, no, no. Let me clarify what I, no, no, back up. What I complained about is the audio technical issue was on the event, whatever, the hosting person's company's side. The audio issues that were muffled and whatever the hell they're talking about, what you just referenced is all the people at home, the feed coming from other people's homes at different locations coming in. Mm -hmm. what, what I have attended, nine times out of 10, my video is not being shown and half the time my audio is being muted. So it's not me, it's them. And if you're going to pay that much in technology, I don't think it has to be flawless, but don't sit here and ignore the fact that you're having an issue. And let's not pretend that it happens to everybody because it doesn't just saying and yes they tried the virtual event i would love to know who the event planner was for that or the designer for that and love to ask them a ton of questions yeah so i mean that's all what i read on it was was real negative and was just you know i mean the first person to get an award like i don't know their microphone was muted their the audio wasn't coming in you know and the, so then he got upset when they were like oh yeah okay like we're good and then he finally the audio finally got fixed and he had to like get off redo his speech no he, which obviously is never going to be the as good as the first one you say um so there was you know some some flubs that i feel like could have been avoided had all of these people tested like you do a dry run like you would do that anyways well, maybe they did. Event. Maybe they have sudden link and their internet is shit. Like, listen, if these people make millions of dollars, they ought to be able to run their own fiber optics. Right? Oh shit. But they could also be the type of people, even event planners do this. They forget to select the appropriate mic to talk into. 
yeah, on the set. That's, that's all part of the dry run. You know, like all of these things should be tested. The people giving the speeches, they already know they won, right? Mm. Or they at least think they might have won. And even if they don't, they should be like, hey, yeah, I'm going to tell this. who's nominated. I'm going to test this, right? Like I need to do a dry run for myself and make sure I know what to do. Honestly, at that point, is it really worth it? No, but if you're, if you're hosting this big of an event and you're going to have that many different speakers, you got to test all of them. But I really, truly think it would have been more successful had they actually told these people and did a pre-recorded video and just showed the video of them accepting the award. It would have been a lot easier for them. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> There's no ammunition for you to talk shit if they don't do it live. But it is also, I think, um, a positive thing in the sense that let's hope some people don't assume that celebrities and all these wonderful award shows and money they put into shit like this is always going to be perfect. Maybe they'll stop putting these people and things on a pedestal. No, maybe not. I mean, probably not, but it does show like, all right, well, we are all still human. Absolutely. But then it falls back on, you know, the event planner and the AV tech of who didn't do their job. Well, I think probably one of the biggest problems I mean, yes, people at home, if you're not testing, and who knows, they could have tested behind the scenes before they brought them up on the screen. You never know. I mean, I know I'm the harshest critic for anyone who fucks something up when they. Yep. But in the beginning of the entire thing, they indicated they made fun of all of it, knowing full well it was not going to be perfect. It's not ideal. It's not normal. So they acknowledged the fact that there will probably be issues. Mm -hmm. But I have a problem when people assume that they're not going to be issues and then they sit here and say it's the best event on the planet. That's why I have a problem. We already heard well, myself. I just wanted to give the negative side of it and be like, yeah, you know, like the speeches were good and like it was fun to hear them make fun of things and how people were dressed and, you know, have all their little parties and things like that. But I mean, if you get down to the brass tacks of it, it wasn't very well executed. No, it really wasn't. But if you haven't watched it, go watch at least some clips so you can get an idea of what TJ is referring to. All right, so moving on to our last topic because- um, Quick, like a bunny rabbit. I'm not gonna remember, wow, this is really fun. There's a girl in a hot pink quinceanera Focus. outside. I'm sorry, She's it's taking pictures. She's taking well, pictures. Well, I know, but that's, it's large. It's like- It should be. Poofy. It's more expensive than a wedding dress. Yes, it is, which is insane. But anyway, okay. <laughs> so um, I sat through, well, you sat through it too. I did we sit all through, sit through it. it? We okay. did. Okay, good. So I'm not gonna be completely out of- um, Nope, just well, my listeners. I'll probably still be quoting it wrong. Probably. All right, so we all sat through, um, oh my God, what is it even called? What's the arena called? It's the Dallas Cowboys arena. Is it AT&T Center, AT&T Stadium? It's AT&T Stadium. There we go, AT&T Stadium. I told you, I didn't have my shit together today. I was not prepared. Um, all right, so the AT&T Stadium, the senior manager of operations okay sure the death star <laughs> i mean are, are we talking star wars is that really right yes you really call that the death star have you seen the shape of it what oh yeah that makes more sense now <laughs> well well i'm not from dfw so i don't know because they, they always, always lose. lose oh i was like uh, it's a round stadium that's why they call it the death star duh <laughs> It really was like no, you know, Epcot Center. Death oh. Star. Oh, they can't always lose. Didn't they just sign Dak to a ridiculous contract and like more money than any players ever Focus. gotten for more shitty seasons? Okay, anyway, yes, they'll still lose. Okay, so um, so he went through and talked about how they handled COVID the changes to how they were going to run things and the fact that they did not stop doing events except for like what a month maybe two yeah it was fantastic they started doing high school graduations in june they did events for the summer they did a pbr event they hosted two bowl games for college football um what else uh they did the pdr didn't they i said pbr oh 
Yeah. Uh, Monster Jam. Monster Pat's Ribbon. Oh. Yeah, Monster. No, oh, yeah, they did do the Monster Jam. Yeah, they tr the truck rally. Yes. Monster trucks. That's so stuff. he said when this first came out, they immediately formed this task force, internal task force to deal with this, figure out what their process was um, going to be and um, how they were going to handle it, what they were going to do to keep people safe, what they were going to do for their staff, what kind of training they were going to do. And so because they started that so quickly, which the only negative that he said that I took away from it was the fact that he tried to commend an IT person for running this task force. <laughs> now, not all IT people are the same, but the IT people we deal with, oh my God. <sighs> I can't, but that's fine. They had an IT person that handled it and they were able to keep it, you know, on track doing what they needed to do, got everything organized, kept in um, communication with the city, you know, officials that they needed to and were able to figure out how to make it work. So the first thing, that first task force, some of the things they did, let's see. So they zip tied off the chairs in the stadium that they were not going to be using. Um, they did have the social distancing chairs down on the floor when they did the graduations with the stage down there. So the students were social distanced and they limited how many people could attend. Um, they did do check like the health check list for all their employees. They had an app on their phone that they had to go in and do, do all their daily symptoms. And when they got there, they got to the kiosk thing, they checked temperature and you basically scanned your QR code, QR code inside that app and it associated it with you. So everything was already uploaded in their system. Yes. Um, the hand sanitation signage, you know, the outside part where the employees came in was very intense in my opinion. The whole setup looked like ticketing area. Um, they moved strictly to all mobile ticketing and paperless transactions, right? Yes, they were only taking credit cards. Yeah, or like cards or app, I'm assuming like Apple Pay, Google Pay, that kind of stuff. Because I think yeah. it was, you could still do it on your phone. Um, they did put up the plexiglass things, although some of them to me didn't look tall enough, but that's, you know, everything. That's only where the short people worked. Yeah. <laughs> and they did do pre-packaging of everything. Um, and then they also indicated that when people showed up for, let's say, one of the Cowboys games, they had to put the mask on as soon as they got out of the car and couldn't take it off until they were actually in their seat physically eating or drinking something yes however they did still do tailgating which i thought was interesting because some of the pictures yes. they showed some of them did not have their masks on and were not eating or drinking and they also did every other space which is not truly six feet and they told them they were not allowed to join tailgates but come on who's who's to, who's out there being the bouncer of all these tailgates you no get decked by some drunk guy because you know the cowboys lose again no thank you it's expected. You're more likely to get hit if they win something. <laughs> <laughs> True that. Anyways, yeah. <clears throat> um, I really liked the cashless system that they went to. And then that they also gave you the opportunity that like, if you needed to run to Walmart across the street, because maybe you don't have a credit card or a debit card, you were able to exit and re-enter. Yeah, go to the ATM. Or, you know, whatever. Go to Walmart and buy you a gift card. Yeah, or that. A Visa yeah. gift card. Um, but I thought, you know, that was nice, right? Because they didn't have to. They could be like, oh, well, sorry. You know, it was in the newsletter when you bought the tickets. It was there. Like, you should have been prepared for this. Yeah. I don't feel like they were out. I mean, you know. No, they weren't no. out to get anybody. No. And the way he explained everything, even from the beginning, his name's Paul Turner, just for clarification, he... Um, he indicated in the very beginning that it was all what they can continue to do to help support the community and get the fans and audiences back into the stadium. So they were not going to do anything that was going to negatively impact. Now, obviously, everyone still deals with those handful of people who refuse to wear a mask and they're going to pitch a fit about it. And some that did break the zip ties. I mean, who knows? For shits and giggles. Be yes, but, me why that's necessary. But then they reevaluated the zip tie situation and had ushers be like, Hey, this is where you need to sit. Like yep. they had them actively moving people around that may not have been sitting in the right spot. Right. And Ooh, tell them about the usher thing. I loved that thing. That was a great idea. 
little paddle, the fan thing with put your mask on. Oh. The, the other side said, no. I don't know. Green for go. <laughs> no. I mean, it was obviously in blue and silver and whatever their damn colors are, maybe covered in stars for all I fucking know. But it had one that like something about please put your mask on or thank you for putting your mask on or thank you for wearing it in a very non- but it's just this passive aggressive way, maybe. It was a little bit passive aggressive. Well, so I must have to... missed that part when I went to go do my job. Uh, we all do jobs. What what is that? Count you know attendance I mean. for students you know who I aren't mean. showing? You know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really nice because the ushers then didn't have to get into an altercation. They could ask them yeah. nicely um to put their mask back on. Um and then the other thing. The only other thing that I felt was great that he mentioned was that he also, or at least the moderator said, it is very clear and understandable that not everyone has the same budget as the operations team at at and Stadium. Yeah. So there is a lot of money there. So they were able to put a lot of things in place that some people did not. Um, but it sounded like it was a really great system. They had all these successful events. They were able to keep the doors open and keep going from basically end of May, early June until now. Like they've never truly shut down again. In fact, they've bailed out a lot of things. Yes. However, I would like to see like all of the candid pictures, right? Because obviously you pick and choose. You should pick and choose which ones you're showing to people. You know. Should. Key word should. is should. Yeah. Um. So what did the other like 300 pictures look like of these events? I'm sure our wonderful marketing person can find some and we can put them <laughs> post this YouTube video. I mean, we have a few days to do that already. Because obviously if you're hosting a webinar or you're speaking at a webinar, you want to show like the best of the best, right? And you want to talk about the best of the best and what really worked and kind of like, you know, you like dabble on what didn't work, but don't really delve too far into it or you should. Um, so I just want to see like how truthful was it? You know, it was pretty damn truthful. How I mean, do you know? Uh, well, because did we research, did we research these events? Like, are there social media posts of it somewhere um, that discount what he said? I don't know. I'm just playing the devil's advocate. I just, you know, I'm, just I'm sure there's the plenty devil, of people playing the devil's advocate. You know. Yeah. Oh, the other thing we forgot to mention was the sweets. They closed off all the, oh, the, the yeah. field suites and limited suites, and you could only then have capacity for the number of seats that were actually in the suite. Yes. So no more yeah. extra people. Um, and then I don't remember how many games they actually had at home. Not that it makes much of a difference, but I think they sold out for every single one that they did have at home, didn't they? Something what was there? their What was their working capacity? I don't what think he ever flat out said that number. And if he did, I wrote it down and I'll be it's damned if now. I don't know where I put my notes. It's, it's gone now. <laughs> um. Yeah. But it was really cool. I really enjoyed that webinar. It was really nice to hear from a venue standpoint yeah. um, what people are doing. Um, Fluctuated around 25,000 a game. Oh, good. Good. Our marketing person said he didn't say. So I was right. I'm not making that up. Be awesome if she actually smiled at some point. Oh yeah, and then depending pod, on they, pod numbers, that's yeah, right. they did pods too. Yeah, because they those switched. They were doing like two person pods, and then some were ten person pods, and there was like a whole diagram. Yeah, so they started out doing two and tens, and tens didn't really work out because there was a lot more in the six and the eight range. And so mm -hmm. it was what if you're over two to four people, or over four people, then you were supposed to call, and they were going to try and make you like your own individual pod seating somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, I thought it went well. I thought it was really positive. It was really nice to hear something positive, even though I focus so much on the negative, but it was very positive. And that's why I wanted to focus on the negative because I was like, well, maybe he was lying. How would he lie? <laughs> you don't seem like someone who lies. It's like cowboys. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's football in general. Who gives a shit? I don't know. That's why it probably happened. You know, people are nicer in the South, as they say. It's fine. Yeah, is it? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Anything I mean, else you want to add for today besides it's not fine? It's not fine. It's not. <laughs> um, we weren't sponsored by Ranch Water. No. 
or the AT&T Stadium. No. Or Color Factory. Or the Color Factory. Although, you know, if they want to send swag, that's fine too. <laughs> or what? who does the Golden Globes? Uh, 28.2%. Hmm. Foreign Press something or another. Yeah. HFPA. I'm not sponsored by Quick cussing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, so they had an average of 28.2% in attendance, which is below the 35% and 40% that a lot of people were operating at. But I'm curious what's going to happen come the fall now that everybody's allowed to go to full capacity. <clears throat> be fun to see. I'm just going to stay in my house. They have the highest attendance overall. Yeah, as the facts start trickling in. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> fact checkers fact checker yeah all right well that is all for ERT today Ert. hey stop looking at the what is it yeah you tell me squirrel Seems they're loud well because they're, they're right out of my window yeah well, because they're arguing stop. well about I the mean, bushes well yeah they're like arguing about who's laying what mulch i mean give me a break <sighs> oh they are yelling wrong podcast you gonna knock on, on the window, window? yeah you yeah. should we getting this on the recording? Oh, she just unhooked herself from the computer. <laughs> what movie was it? Moved away. Huh? My big fat Greek wedding when she tries to walk away from her desk and her headphones knock yeah. back. Yeah, I made sure it didn't take out the microphone. Anyways, yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining us on Earth. I feel like I should have had a virtual background for this. <laughs> I'm trying to close this shit out. These people are probably annoyed with us already. My whole hysterical meltdown I had. Are that we cutting that best. out? I guess we're no, not we're not cutting that out. Thank you for <laughs> joining us today on Ert. Ert, sketch your Ert. Um, yeah. And if there's any events or places that you want me to go investigate, Oy. I'm here for that. I'm here for that. Not okay. Sarah, but I am. Yeah, I'm gonna investigate a reptile event. I guess I could take notes this weekend. You Did could. You it's outside. Uh, uh, I no, it's it in a pavilion. Oh, yeah, this is their thing on the back side, right? Did you buy your tea yet? No, oh, okay. I'm sorry, I've been working, ma'am. Well, I have two, all it does is hit go. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, bye. Enjoy, enjoy y'all's week. <laughs> bye. bye. Thanks for joining us this week on Events Real Talk. Make sure to visit us at Events Real Talk on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, where you can subscribe to the show on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you enjoy the show, leave a review or comment, or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. References. Thanks for listening.